Ardern's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern says Wellington landlords shouldn't be hiking rents to cash in on the bolstered student allowance this year because, quote, it's morally wrong. Here's what she said to us. You're calling uh, really on the, uh, I guess, the, the question for landlords is whether, whether or not, you know, it may be a legal thing to do, but whether that's morally right. Rental prices now match those in Tamaki, Makoto, Auckland. So is this yet another nail in the coffin for those wanting to get on the property ladder? We're joined this morning by Ashley Church, the Property Institute of New Zealand's Chief Executive to unpack it all. Tēnā koe, good morning. Good morning, Jack. We have heard a lot about these rent rises right around the country, but particularly in Wellington. And we've heard some extraordinary examples over the last couple of weeks. Rents rising by $400 a year, $600 a year in some cases. Why have prices yeah. surged? Oh, there's, there's a range of things that are feeding into that. Um, part of it's to do with, with lack of supply. So there's, a, uh, there's a, an iceberg of discontent which is affecting the market at the moment. You and I have talked about this before, which is impacting on supply of rentals. That's particularly bad in Wellington. There's 11% fewer listings uh, uh, last month than there was a year ago at the same time. So, so clearly that's impacting on the cost of rentals in the market. There's also, again, you and I have talked about this before, there's also some, some issues which are impacting on market confidence. Property investors are being scared out of the market. There's an exodus at the moment. So there's a whole range of things that are impacting on that, particularly in Wellington at the moment because of that supply issue. To what extent do you think the increase in student allowance and student loan allowance impacting on rental prices? Oh, look, I think it has had an impact. I don't think that's unreasonable. The, um, the, the, the problem is, of course, is that that's not the only factor. So it's probably mm. not helpful to focus on that and say, uh, with the, the, the indicate that that's necessarily the only problem. As I said before, there's a, there's a, a problem with supply, which is also pushing those prices up. Uh, there's that confidence issue. The other thing that's happened, of course, Jack, is that you've had uh, capital gain pretty much dry up, and it's going to be... Uh, capital gain won't be a feature of the market now for four or five years until the next upturn in the market. And so you've got investors who've got properties that are costing them to own, so, so most investors, certainly newer investors, don't actually make a profit on their property, and they're taking a hit on, on uh, capital growth. So essentially they're looking at their properties and saying, I'm not making any money on this property, there's no increase in its value, why would I own it? So all of those things are either feeding into increased rentals or disappearance from the market. We have heard a lot of noise though from students, and students in particular in, in Wellington. Is that because students are more likely to be renters or because students are more likely to feel the pinch at the moment? Oh, pr pr bit, of, bit of both. I think probably a little mm. bit of the latter. They're obviously a bit more price sensitive in respect of what they can actually afford. Um, but also, as I said before, I think there probably is a real issue there. In this, I mean, the, the increase in Wellington over the last 12 months has been 4.2%. So that's a real increase, as you indicated before. That's four or 500 bucks per year. Mm. Um, Wellington rents now, particularly in Wellington Central, are at about, the, the median's 550 per week. That's actually the same as Auckland, Jack. So that's a significant increase. Yeah. And that gives you some indication of how serious that problem is in the Wellington market. What what did you make of the Prime Minister's comment to us yesterday? Because it surprised me when she said she, she needed landlords to do what was morally right. Yeah. I thought, you know what, I'm not, yeah. I'm not too sure that, uh, that anyone looking to make money <laughs> is necessarily going to be motivated by what is morally right, first and foremost at the very least. Well, 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 not just that, but look, really disappointed for two reasons. One, because, as I said, there's a whole range of things that are actually impacting on rents at the moment, and some of those things are being caused by the market, market conditions. Some of those are actually a direct consequence of things that the government itself is actually doing. So for in, in a market where we need more rentals built as quickly as possible, we've actually got a government which seems to be doing everything that it possibly can to actually make it more difficult to invest in the market and indeed stay in the market. So for the Prime Minister to make the comment that she felt that, it was, that, that there was a moral obligation on investors either demonstrates an extraordinary lack of understanding of the market or a condescension toward those people who are actually investing in the market. Now, I'm not sure which of those two it is, but either way, it's not accept it might be acceptable for a backbencher or somebody who was a junior minister, but it's not acceptable for the Prime Minister not to understand the market that way. This is the pointy end of the crisis now, isn't it? Like you say, house values have pretty much plateaued around the country. Certainly in, in Auckland they've plateaued uh, recently. But I can, I can imagine if you are paying rent, uh, record rent just to, just to keep a roof over your head, the prospects of getting on the property ladder, even with the, the easing of the LVR restrictions, is not looking too rosy. 
No, although, you, you know, even now, even now, there are still solutions. There are still things that a, that a government that was motivated to get people into the market could do. For example, uh, uh, no deposit loans and with, mm. with some sort of government guarantee, perhaps for the first few years on the deposit. Um, interest-free loans. Uh, sorry, not interest-free loans. Interest-only loans, where only interest was being paid, no principal for a while. So there are things, and they're not ideal. I mean, obviously, we want homes to be affordable, but there are ways to mm. still get people into the market. But to do that, you need to have a view which is about incentives and actually about providing ways for that to happen. And at the moment, we don't seem to have that. We seem to have an assumption that the government's going to provide all the houses that we need and that the nasty uh, property investors need to be punished and actually scared out of the market. It's a recipe for disaster. Ashley Church from the Property Institute. Thank you so much for your time, as always. Just turned 18 minutes Thanks. to 7.